My beloved brothers and sisters, I testify of angels, both the heavenly and the mortal kind. In doing so, I am testifying that God never leaves us alone, never leaves us unaided in the challenges that we face, nor will he so long as time shall last, or the earth shall stand, or there shall be one man or woman or child upon the face thereof to be saved. On occasions, global or personal, we may feel we're distanced from God, shut out from heaven, lost, alone in dark and dreary places. Often enough, that distress can be of our own making. But even then, the Father of us all is watching and assisting. And always there are those angels who come and go all around us, seen and unseen, known and unknown, mortal and immortal. May we all believe more readily in and have more gratitude for the Lord's promise as contained in one of President Monson's favorite scriptures. I will go before your face. I will be on your right hand and on your left. My spirit shall be in your heart and mine angels round about you to bear you up. In the process of praying for those angels to attend us, May we all try to be a little more angelic ourselves with a kind word, a strong arm, a declaration of faith, and the covenant wherewith we have covenanted. Hi, this is Ben. Welcome to day four of our Come Follow Me scripture highlights from 2 Kings chapters 1 through 16. When was the last time you were afraid? Afraid of making a commitment? Afraid to let someone go? Afraid to reach out to someone who needed your ministering love? Afraid to move forward? Afraid of the unknown? Of failing? Of being rejected? Of disappointment? Afraid of an earthquake, flood, fire, or other natural disaster? Afraid of not being chosen, or maybe even the fear of being chosen? Have you ever feared not being good enough for something? Or maybe feared that you wouldn't be able to inherit celestial glory? Fear isn't new. Men and women in every age have found reasons to fear. And with the world spinning into such chaos today, there are certainly causes of fear all around us. But fear can limit our perspective. When we allow ourselves to be overcome with fear, it can even become paralyzing and prevent us from seeing and experiencing our full potential. When you take time to look with an eternal perspective at the question, why do we fear? The answer becomes pretty clear. We know that we're children of God and that He loves us perfectly. And if that's true, though we might go through some pretty uncomfortable experiences in our mortal life, we know that because God loves us infinitely and perfectly, if we obey His voice, we will always have His help. He will never leave us alone. So then, why do we sometimes fear? The answer is because sometimes we forget what we do not see. And sometimes the Lord's protecting hand is a hand that is not seen with the natural eye. But what an awesome blessing it is when the Holy Ghost can expand our view. This truth is illustrated so well in a story in 2 Kings chapter 6. This week, we get to study the experience the prophet Elisha had when the king of Syria had sent a legion during the night that surrounded the city where Elisha was. When Elisha woke up the next morning, he found that they were completely encompassed by the Syrian army and their horses and their chariots. A young man who was with Elisha saw the large armies surrounding them and became anxious. The young servant was afraid of how this battle might end seeing that they appeared to be far outnumbered by their enemy with no hope in sight. But Elisha told him not to worry. It was the young man's sight that was the problem, not the Syrian army. Elisha told the boy, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now those words might be encouraging. But when you're this young man and you can see with your own eyes that the odds seem to be nowhere close to being in your favor, 
those words might have been difficult to believe. But Elisha didn't stop there. Elisha then prayed to the Lord to open the eyes of the young man, that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Just like that young servant, you might find yourself in times when you struggle to see how God is working in your life. Even times when you feel completely surrounded by trial or darkness, when for all you can see, there seems to be no hope that you'll ever make it out alive. When the trials of mortality drop you to your very knees, can you see the hand of the Lord in your life? Do you see Him working miracles, great and small, to blaze the trail before you, to give you everything you need to choose to come unto Him and be rescued and perfected in Him? In the difficult moments, keep waiting and trusting in God and in His timing. And remember the recent words of President Russell M. Nelson urging us to seek and expect miracles. You too can pray asking the Lord to open your eyes to see the things you would not normally see on your own. Just like with Elisha and his young servant, there are more with you than those you can see lined up against you. And as you keep your covenants with the Lord, you have His promise that He will bear you up. And if you've broken covenants with the Lord, you have the promise that if you will turn back to Him, and away from your sins, and lean upon His merciful arm, you too will have His angels before you, and on your right, and on your left. And sometimes, for all of us, those angels might be the mortals God has given us to stand with us. That is one of the great reasons for a priesthood quorum, or the Relief Society, and our young women classes. And it is at the very core of why we have ministering assignments that we're urged to faithfully fulfill with love to God and love to our neighbor. So with that in mind, let us all recognize and welcome the heaven-sent mortal angels the Lord sends to help us in our lives, and always, always see in every ministering assignment or prompting you receive that great blessing and opportunity being given to you to reach out, strengthen, lift, and be the angels and horses and chariots of fire God himself is sending to rescue one of his own children who's having a hard time and feels that they're going about it alone. Regardless of the number of our enemies or the worldly power they might wield, when we stand with the Lord, we are in the majority. The consoling words of Elisha to that young man are still true today. Can you in your mind see the Lord descending at His glorious second coming? It will be breathtaking. The scope and grandeur, the vastness and magnificence will exceed anything mortal eyes have ever seen or experienced when the countless hosts of heaven descend with the Savior in might, power, and glory. Never lose sight of the grandeur of that day. Just as the Lord intervened to confuse and blind the Syrians, allowing the armies of Israel to win their battle, those who fight on the Lord's side today fight on the winning team, and they will win. Therefore, fear not, little flock, the Lord has said. Do good. Let earth and hell combine against you. For if ye are built upon my rock, they cannot prevail. Look unto me in every thought. Doubt not, fear not. Thanks for listening to this scripture highlight. Don't miss the last highlight for this week's study coming up tomorrow. In that highlight, we'll prepare ourselves to understand the rest of the Old Testament. Have a wonderful day. And remember, even in and especially in the darkest trials of life, there is always, always hope in Christ.